Welcome back to Madden 16 Ultimate Team, everybody. My name is Mr. Hurricane, and in today's episode, we're getting off to a fast start. Great interception there by Marcus Peters, and he will take it back for the pick six. I've been playing some head-to-head -head seasons mode lately, and I have a playoff game to share with you guys in a little bit. First, I'm showing you the road to the postseason as I was trying to secure a first round bye. And my opponent here just cannot complete a pass. He's tried Peters. He's tried Vontae Davis. There's an overthrow. One for five. Then fourth and ten. He goes back Peters' way and that's knocked away. Incomplete turnover on downs. This is about as good as we've seen the secondary play. And that's going to do it for this first game. Now we're into game number two. Finally some offense now for me. We're trailing by seven. Second and 19. Let's go underneath and let Tyler Lockett use the speed. Flying past everybody, he goes 85 yards for the touchdown. By the way, I also added a Brandon Marshall to the offense. On defense, I made an addition as well, and safety Darian Stewart, who can't tackle Travis Kelsey here, and he goes down to the one-yard line. It's a 94 overall Football Outsiders Darian Stewart. He's the highest-rated player on my team. And you'll see him quite a bit as we get to the playoff matchup. Here's an Andre Ellington score giving my opponent another seven point lead. In the second half, this time it's Vontae Davis with the interception. Both of my outside corners have a pick six and they're helping make up for the lack of offense. My opponent then tacked on a field goal. We're here in the fourth quarter. I drove down and passing underneath. There is Brandon Marshall breaking off a one tackle, make it two. He's down to the one yard line. Now we're trying to take the lead. Let's go to Le'Veon Bell, and he will get us into the end zone. It's a four-point fourth quarter lead now. We're trying to hang on. There's a little over a minute remaining, and this pass goes underneath, and it'll get yards after the catch. Big hit by George Iloka, perhaps the future Minnesota Viking. I hope, anyway. 24-yard line now. He goes back to the other side, and now Darian Stewart misses another tackle, and that's another touchdown. So we're trailing. Trying to come back. I want this first round by 53 seconds to get at least a field goal. Stefan Diggs on the outside gets us 14. We still have all three timeouts in pretty good shape. Down the middle, Brandon Marshall can't hang on at the 30. So 30 seconds remain on the clock. Third down and five. Against the blitz, let's go short. Here's Tyler Lockett. He's got open field. Diggs won't block anybody, but Lockett hits the back juke, and that's going to take him to the end zone. We retake the lead with under 20 seconds left. Now can we hang on? We're sending pressure, getting aggressive, but it's not working. So my opponent goes deep, and that's caught inside the 40. One more play. Again, I'm trying to create pressure. It doesn't work. He throws deep, and that is tipped and incomplete. We hang on for this second victory. One more, and we get the first round by. My opponent in this one drives down the field. Play action with Russell Wilson, and look at the one-handed grab. Darian Stewart couldn't do much to stop that one. Second and goal. Now back corner, both feet down. Touchdown, Santonio Holmes. I think that's honestly one of the best touchdowns I've seen in Madden this year. Now I have to follow it up, and there's a short pass complete, and Charles Clay is streaking up the sideline all the way down to the six-yard line. We're taking all these short passes, getting some nice runs, and then he gets caught off sides. Quick slant, Brandon Marshall. That will tie the game at seven. Now there are two minutes to go in the second half. And down the middle, that pass is complete. And breaking away again, Darian Stewart is supposed to be able to tackle better than this. He's the highest rated player on my team, but he does not play better than my George Iloka. Not all these passes are his fault, but I'm really upset about the tackling. Here's an option that didn't work very well. Pitched into the middle of nowhere, Michael Kendricks recovers. Here's my chance to create a lead. I have just over a minute left. Pressure gets there, but I find Charles Clay on the post down the middle. That gets us to the 40. Now 45 seconds remain. This time we're going to get Carr outside the pocket. I see Clay open downfield, and he makes the catch. Spinning out at the 15-yard line. Now I'm looking to score a touchdown, and my opponent hits me with this fake field goal defense. And it did catch me off guard on that snap. So we back up to the 18. And my opponent does the same thing. So this time I counter deep to Charles Clay. That's a touchdown and we take the lead. Game over. 
three pretty solid games here. Two of them resulted in quits, and now we are prepared for the postseason. My team is an 85 overall. I like the addition of Brandon Marshall. He adds a nice element to our offense. And then I thought I'd get more from Darian Stewart, but we really haven't seen it yet. Now it's his time to hopefully make some plays for us. Into the divisional playoff game, and there is one of the best things I've seen from Stewart so far. Nice tackle on Terrell Davis. We force third and seven, and the blitz fails me, and the pass goes underneath to the outside to move the chains. We're up against a Jameis Winston in this gameplay as he tosses outside trying to get Davis on the edge. I catch him there with Darian Stewart and hold him at the 38-yard line. Another third down and medium. And this time we drop the interception. That was Michael Kendricks. You guys know how I feel about dropped interceptions. So now we have to stop him on fourth down and five. He goes up the seam, getting past Darian Stewart and everybody else. Wow, is he fast. That was Emmanuel Sanders, and we're still waiting for something else from Darian Stewart. Trailing 7-0 here in the first quarter, we're going back to my dink and dunk offense, creating these openings for DeAndre Hopkins. Most of my play calling is to exploit zone coverage, so a lot of flood and levels concepts. And we're going to get Bell involved quite a bit in the flats on the wheel routes. It's still really strange to me to not be running as much, but against man up three deep, that's exactly what I'm going to do, and I'll establish my hurry-up offense at this point. Third and inches, back to Le'Veon Bell, I don't get the man up three deep defense. Unfortunately, the quarter came to an end, so I couldn't keep running hurry-up. My opponent then switched up his defense, and we forgot to block somebody, great. Kalias Campbell plants Derek Carr in the backfield. And then against a three-man rush on third down, I'll scramble out. There's Le'Veon Bell on the wheel route, and that will tie the game. I kind of feel like I keep using the same tactics on offense, but I keep facing these zone coverages that don't have an emphasis on blitzing, so I pretty much just stick to that stuff that works for me. So the game is tied now in the second quarter. Short pass didn't give much, then third and ten. Down goes Jameis Winston. And I forgot I had Gerald McCoy on the team because he hasn't really been doing too much of that for me. But the sack forces a punt, and for some reason, why did I do that? I just let him flip field position. I lost at least 30 or 40 yards by that just stupid move of Dree Archer. So I get backed up instead of having great field position, but thankfully I moved the chains here on the crossing pattern for DeAndre Hopkins. Now we're going to go to a strong flood, roll out right... And wait for Le'Veon Bell to do his thing. He breaks free, and we're into opposing territory. That's not my preferred way to run an offense, so I'll go back to plays like this where I just stand in the pocket and deliver a well-timed throw to Charles Clay. But against plays like this with three-man rushes, I'm just going to roll out, improvise. Look at the pump fake. It actually worked, and Tyler Lockett makes the catch inside the 20. I think that pump fake was completely accidental, but it was also pretty awesome. 25 seconds now on the clock. Let's go deep. Brandon Marshall for the touchdown. Hey, if they're going to do that against me, I got to find a guy to do it against them. And Brandon Marshall's the perfect guy for it. So we're leading by seven, but watch out. He's going deep and Stefan Diggs breaking away from Darian Stewart. That's all rookie Stefan Diggs. I don't know why he had to do that against me. But do we need any further proof that this Darian Stewart isn't that good? 14-14 as we take this to the second quarter. Not forgetting about Le'Veon Bell. Want to get him some touches. Second and four now. Derek Carr misses DeAndre Hopkins. A very rare underneath miss. So we need a play on third down. And I go down the middle to Charles Clay who hangs on for the first down. He's been playing a very big role in the offense in this episode. Here comes pressure as I miss Charles Clay open underneath and instead threw it to Brandon Marshall. That falls incomplete. Now third down. Pressure gets there again as Carr has the pass knocked down. So we end up just punting on this possession. I missed an easy first down chance. That one's costly. Now we go to defense and I read the screen and it sucks when you read the screen and you still can't get out there to make the play. That's a first down. At least Stewart made the tackle that time. Now he wants to go back to the ground game, and that's not going to happen. Four defenders there in the backfield. Terrell Davis at seven yards on the ground. Then I bring the blitz, and that pays off. Michael Kendricks brings down Winston. Third down and 19, and look at this. We gave it up. I thought I had good user position, but he got it just over the top of me and between Darian Stewart. 
Then he goes back to the screen, breaks to the outside. I had a bad miss, and Stewart can't rip it out. We're just giving up way too many passing yards. Now in the eye formation, he goes to the fullback dive, and George Iloka, who will look pretty good next to Harrison Smith, I might add, makes the play. Then he fakes to Antonio Gates, tosses it outside, and Everson Griffin makes the play there. Perhaps future teammate of George Iloka. We force third down and six. This time he takes the underneath option, and we just can't stop Antonio Gates. Although he probably would have gone for it anyway. So he's inside the red zone, up the middle, and breaking one tackle, Davis picks up around four. He's trying to drain this clock as much as he can. Third and two. Davis is stopped again. We force fourth and inches, and he's going to go for it. So it's time to stack the box. And the quarterback sneak is denied. He tried to get it with Winston, and Kendrick stops him. That might be the first time I've stopped the sneak this year. The game remains tied, less than two minutes to go. I'm scrambling around with Derek Carr and taking it out of bounds after a gain of 13. I don't need to get aggressive really whatsoever, as long as we can do things like this. Six yard gain there for Le'Veon Bell. A minute 18 on the clock. This time Carr underneath, Brandon Marshall has the reception and takes it to midfield. With my opponent not adjusting very much, it was pretty easy marching down the field. Here's Bell sweeping to the outside. He gets the first down and takes it out of bounds. We're getting close to field goal range. 50 seconds on the clock. There's the man up three deep defense. And look at the blocking downfield. Bell inside the 10. I'm pretty sure he just gave the touchdown to me there. But I take the lead, although I did leave a lot of time on the clock. And we'll see if that costs me. I'm getting aggressive to start this possession with a cornerback blitz, but he gets the pass out just in time and gets the first down. Now with 25 seconds on the clock, he goes empty. Winston up the seam, and that pass is incomplete. Vontae Davis rips it out at the last moment. I was sure that was going to be a completion. So now we get more conservative, and we give Winston plenty of time. He goes deep to the end zone, and it's caught for the touchdown. Best safety on the team, George Iloka couldn't knock it away. And now he's going for the lead. Against a two-point conversion, I come out with a man blitz, but then I change my mind. Cover three zone, only bring four. Here we go. And Winston is sacked. Gerald McCoy breaks through. I took away the crossing pattern. Everybody else was covered. And his last hope now is an onside kick, which is picked up by Carlos Williams. And I am moving on here in the postseason. So perhaps I should have not scored the touchdown with Le'Veon Bell and just taken some more time off the clock. But we still win in spectacular fashion. And I could just take one knee and this would all be over. But he'd rather quit. And I don't get a thumbnail now from this game, which is always the most annoying part about a quit. But at least I get the victory, that's all that matters. I'll be moving on and we'll see if Darian Stewart can make a play in my future games. I'm not impressed, I've played solo challenges in the four games you saw today. I've yet to see him make a play that stood out to me. George Iloka's better, and hopefully by my next Mutt video, he's a Viking. But that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave a like if you did. Leave your feedback down below and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time. And as I've mentioned in the past, if there's anybody online claiming to be me, asking for cards, that's not me. I don't want your cards. That's it for today. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you next time.